Hello there, YouTube. Today we're going to talk about my favorite writer of all time and one of his lesser known works. It's about Victor Hugo. Here we go. So, Victor Hugo, for those who don't know, is my favorite writer of all time. I love all of his books. I think he's absolutely brilliant. Uh, I go out of my way to get anything I can by him. As you can see here, this is my copy of The Toilers of the Sea in French, which I ambitiously tried to read in the original language and have failed to do so more than about 20 pages so far. Maybe one day I'll finish it. But I'm not holding my breath. But anyway, the book I want to talk about today is not that book. It's one of his obscure ones that I've only been able to get my hands on recently. It's called Hans of Iceland, and it was his first book. And I have it here in this hardcover edition, the centenary edition, in two volumes, volume one and two, uh, of about 600-page novel. Seems a little unnecessary. And this edition uh, was an impulse buy I bought at a used bookstore. It's a five-volume set, um, an incomplete set, I might add. It was a, actually a fairly stupid purchase because two of the five volumes are only the second half of novels. That doesn't do me a lot of good. Uh, I kind of need the first half of the novel for it to do any good. So I have two out of five volumes are useless. Uh, these two have many pages stuck together, and when you try to separate them, the pages are so old they kind of tear into shreds. So really not the most practical or intelligent purchase on my part. But I did get Hans of Iceland, which is hard to find in English, and I wanted to read it for a while because I love everything that he wrote. Um, it was written in 1823. It was the first novel Victor Hugo ever attempted, and that really shows. Uh, I gotta say, as much of a fanboy I am of Hugo, this is not his best work. It's easily the worst thing by him I've read. It's, um, it's an immature novel. He says so in the introduction to his second edition. He criticizes it in saying he had no world experience at the time, didn't really know what he was doing. That being said, there are flashes of brilliance in it. The plotting is quite clever. Uh, the descriptions of the scenery uh, is very good. Um, it's kind of sort of a Nordic political romantic adventure. It's I don't know what genre it is really, but it takes place in uh, mostly in Sweden. And the character Hans of Iceland is sort of this human MacGuffin where everybody's trying to. He's this mythical robber brigand figure who is just renowned for his brutal cruelty and his ability to win fights. And no one really knows what he's like, but he, he ends up being this red-bearded dwarf who's just insane and sadistic and loves to kill for the sake of killing and hates mankind. And he's actually kind of a great character. It's also sort of the character you'd expect a 21-year-old to write. But he's a lot of fun. And he's sort of, everyone in the novel is either trying to find him to kill him or to find him to get help for various dilemmas that they're in. Um, and so I think that character writing is a lot of fun. I think the descriptions of the kind of Nordic landscape, the wasteland, the snows, and the ices is very good. Uh, the romance plot is fairly unconvincing. It really, you know, you could tell that Hugo learned a lot more about love and about romance as he grew up. Um, Les Miserables, for example, was written almost 40 years after this Hans of Iceland. So you can see how much time he had to mature as a writer. The plotting of Hans of Iceland, I think, is pretty clever. Uh, not as clever as he would become in future books. Uh, one of my favorite things that Hugo does in a lot of his books is he will introduce a character or a situation like in the second chapter, and then it'll just disappear for the rest of the book. And you'll wonder, why what was that about? It seemed completely irrelevant. And then in the last chapter, that thing will come back and end up being the key that ties the whole story together. And I guess it's a little gimmicky, but I, to me, it's like a magic trick. I don't know how he does it. I, every time I, I see it, I'm amazed and delighted by it. And I think it's just the most brilliant uh, way to plot out a novel. I've never figured out how to do it myself, but I, I love that he does that. Um, he doesn't do anything quite that clever in Hans, but it is uh, pretty well plotted. Uh, if you're a Hugo fanatic like like I am, it's probably worth reading. But as I say, it's the worst one of his novels that I've read, although it's better than anything I could have written when I was 21. But if you don't read Hans of Iceland, you really ought to read something by Victor Hugo. It kind of doesn't matter what. Uh, his novels are my absolute favorite, and so I highly recommend going out and checking out something by him, whether it be The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Les Miserables, 
or any of his other lesser known works. They're all fantastic. That's all for today. I'll catch you next time. Have a good evening.